beautiful souls. It's Robin, and you're listening to the Live Life Balance Podcast. I'm so excited that you dropped by today, prioritizing you and your wellness. This podcast is for my empty nester mamas, women who are getting close to this new chapter, who have dipped one toe in, or who are fully embracing this new phase. This is for the mamas who are ready to take back their health, to live their best lives. If you're looking for an authentic, supportive community, you're definitely in the right place. It's a space for us to learn how to prioritize ourselves again. I'll be your guide pointing you to ideas and tools that you can experiment with to see what feels good for you. You'll also hear guests talking about their journeys and what's worked for them. Together, we're going to learn how to use the 1% shift method to create little shifts and habits that, who knows, maybe become your non-negotiables to feel your best. By feeling our best, we can show up in our purpose and live the most joyful life, even in the challenging times. And boy, this new chapter can seem challenging, but I can assure you we're not alone. Some of the topics we're going to talk about are self-love, self-care, nutrition, daily toxins, food swaps, mindset, and reframing our thoughts. I hope you leave each time feeling a little more empowered and at ease to take a step or two that will allow you to shine. Are you ready? If you said yes, take a nice deep breath and say, I am ready. Now let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome back to season three of the Live Life Balance podcast. It's 2024 and I am like super thrilled to be here today been a really long time since I sat in the recording chair. Um, I've had a lot going on, but I just could not be more thrilled to be back with you guys today and going forward for the next year. Um, I hope that, my hope is that you will find something within this year um, by listening to my podcast that you can apply to your life to help you create um, the life that you're looking for. I personally find January to be an interesting month. Um, especially the first week, because we see um, a lot of people jumping on that bandwagon for New Year's resolutions and creating these goals and hitting the gym and doing the juice cleanses and all the things. And personally for myself, I'm not a huge proponent of creating these big lofty goals in January um, that seem to be overwhelming and stressful, because for me personally, that doesn't work. And so, um, and the reason that I know that is because I've tried it in years past and I know by March, you know, February, March, I'm not finding the success that I think that I was going to. And then I really just wind up not seeing it through. This past year, my resolution was one of my goals. I'm not going to call it a resolution, but one of my goals was to, um, do a devotional every day for 365 days and journal. And I am proud to say that I hit that goal, I would say 75% of the time. There were some days where I had to double up because a day you know, went by and I, I didn't find the time. I'm not going to say I didn't have the time, but I didn't find the time to do it because of other things that got in the way. However, I did read 365 devotionals and I am super proud of myself. And so I didn't do that by creating this particular goal by just saying, I'm going to do it. I actually set a plate, a plan in place by creating a morning routine. And so within my morning routine, one of the things that I do every day is the devotional. And it changed throughout the year. And so the flexibility allowed for me to be able to continue with the resolution with the changes that occurred um, because of life, right? Because life is lifey. And so I want you to know that that is not me telling you this because, uh, you know, I'm wanting you to feel less than because maybe you didn't. I'm telling you because it's possible. I'm telling you because with the right plan in place, with the right steps, the right attitude, all things are possible. So it's just about getting out of our own way and not allowing perfectionism to destroy some of the things that we want. Um, So first of all, I wanted to talk about the definition of resolution because I think that's super interesting. 
So the definition of resolution is a firm decision to do or not to do something. That is a great definition, but without a plan, without steps in place, it's very hard to accomplish something that you are firm about. You can say, you know, I want to, you know, have a better, you know, eating routine, but if you don't have a plan in place and you don't have support to get you from A to B, it's going to be very hard to be successful with that goal or resolution that you're creating. So that's the first thing in which I feel like when we create a resolution without a plan, without steps, it becomes very ineffective and therefore it drops off, you know, if not by February, by March. Um, Again, it is something that we really need to think about when we're creating these goals for ourselves for 2024. The top 10 resolutions that I saw when I was researching um, was fitness, finance, mental health, drinking less, reading more, losing weight, starting to focus on self, enjoying life, quitting smoking, and changing eating habits. All of those are great goals for certain people who maybe feel like that's an area in their life in which, you know, they want to improve. But again, you can't change these things with just a blanket statement. I'm going to, you know, go on a diet for 30 days, or I'm going to do this quick fix that I saw, or I'm going to do a juice cleanse, or I'm going to go vegan. You know, there's so much more to creating a sustainable goal and a sustainable lifestyle than just creating a goal. So the whole purpose in this episode is not to bash resolutions. It's not to bash goals. It's actually to help us to take a look at what we want to create in a different way and reframe how we're going to get there so that we're all successful. There's a high percentage of people that will drop off. And I don't want that to be you this year. I want for you to do something different so that you come up with success that you find something that works for you, that helps you to create the wellness you are looking for, not what your neighbor's looking for, not what your best friend's looking for, because we're all different. We all have different desires. We all have different goals. We all have different stress. We all have different careers. We have different lifestyles. So again, it's looking at ourselves, taking a deep dive. I feel like a lot of times when we create these goals, we have, it creates pressure for us. It creates competitiveness with somebody else who might be having a similar goal. It might even create, you know, that comparison mindset when you're comparing yourselves to all the other people that you know that have a similar goal. And that kind of is self-sabotaging because it doesn't allow you to work for yourself. It allows you, it creates this mindset of I have to do, I have to get, I have to achieve because I'm looking at Sally and this is what Sally's doing. So that's the first thing I want to kind of talk about is when you are creating these goals and these resolutions for yourself, please do them for yourself. Look within yourself and decide for you and what is going to work for you. And the big thing is the why. It is 2024. It is a new year. And so I want to help you to do things differently. I want to get you off that train that you've been on for all these years that maybe haven't given you the success that you're actually looking for. I want you to feel less stress when you're going to create these you know, goals for yourself. I want you to compare yourself to nobody but yourself because you are you. How do we do that though? You're probably thinking, okay, Robin, here we go again. You're not going to tell me anything that I don't already know. I've been down this road before, but I'm here to say that maybe I will and maybe I won't, but maybe the way I'll say something might trigger something for you to reframe the way you've been thinking about something. I want to invite you to have an open mind and to really do some internal searching. The first thing we have to come up with is the why. We can't just create a goal and not really have a why. So whether you're driving, whether you're walking, whether you're doing chores, however you're doing while you're listening to this episode, afterwards, I really want you to take a a pause 
And I want you to think about if you've already created some goals, if you've already created some quote unquote resolutions, I just want you to ask yourself why. If you haven't created anything, we're going to talk about what you can do to, you know, come up with a few that you might want to work on throughout 2024. Some people don't do it because of the overwhelm. Some people don't do it because they failed numerous times and they don't want to continue to have that same thing happen. So I'm going to talk about, um, well, first of all, when, when we think about wellness, a lot of us think about eating healthier, moving, you know, moving more, maybe finding, you know, better sleep habits, but there's so much more to the holistic lens of wellness. And so if you've listened to some other episodes, you may have heard me talk about the circle of life. But it is an exercise and a model that I really have fallen in love with because I think it's concrete. I think that everybody can do the little activity. It takes literally five minutes and what you walk away with is so much. So I'll drop in the show notes, the circle of life and this little activity you can do. But basically it's a circle that has 12 different components and the the different components put together creates wellness for an individual through a holistic lens. So some of the, or all of the 12 pieces um, are movement, career, finances, education, health, creativity, home cooking, home environment, relationships, social life, joy, and spirituality. Now, some of you might be scratching your head and saying, how does, you know, my relationship create better wellness for myself? Or how does, you know, my career really blend into me having better health and wellness, or maybe even your home environment. It might not be something that you relate to your wellness, but when you're looking from a holistic perspective, it absolutely is. And so this little activity is um, a circle with all those different components. And then with with each component, you're going to rate it with a dot, um, fully satisfied, half satisfied, or not satisfied. And after you do all the little dots, just like connect the dots, you're going to connect them all. And then you're going to see where you have a few of the areas that you might, um, you know, think that you can improve upon. These areas will fluctuate through the year. So it is an activity that you can do quarterly. It's an activity that you could do monthly if you're just getting started. But it is very interesting to see the ebbs and flows because I've done it for a couple of years now. Um, And when I think I'm getting things balanced, another area is out of balance. And so it's all, you know, it's all the dance. It's all about trying to keep everything in flow and everything balanced so that we can create the best wellness for ourselves. Okay, so once you do this exercise, I want you to pick a couple of the components. Um, If you've already set goals, take your goals that you've set and try to put them into one of the 12 areas and see where they fit and see maybe if you have, you know, a heavier set of goals in one area and nothing in another. Um, Everybody can tweak all the areas. I mean, in my opinion, all year long, we can do things um, to always be creating better wellness. And again, I think that's something that um, I really want to hit home is that wellness is an ongoing journey. It's not a start here and a stop here. And so that's what I find to be um, interesting is because Most of the time when we set goals, we're setting a start from here to here to accomplish something, which is great, but it doesn't stop there. Once you accomplish that something, you have to keep going with the something, or maybe at that point you pivot a little bit and you decide that you want to go a different way, but still in that same area doing something. So for example, let's just say you've never run before. You're not going to set out to run a marathon. You may set out to run a 5K. And so your step A to step B, the beginning part is going to be running that 5K. It's going to be all the steps and the programming and whatever it is you need to do in order to accomplish that goal. So then when you get to that goal, maybe you're proud of yourself. Maybe you thought you would never run that far. Maybe the why maybe is that you've never done it before and it's just something fun that you've always wanted to do and you've just never found the time. When you get to that 5K though, you don't just stop running. 
you either continue with some type of, if that excites you and if that's something that you love, you continue running. Maybe you go from a 5K to, I don't know, a half marathon, whatever. You either continue to run 5Ks, you continue to run for enjoyment. Maybe you do trail running. My point is, is that you don't just start here, get to the 5K and never run again. So that's kind of the visualization I want you to have as far as all your wellness goals go. It's not going to start somewhere and end. It's going to start somewhere and you're going to reach something and then you're going to continue. And that continuation might look the same and it might not. It might pivot. Um, It might change based on, I don't know, lots of things. So just remember that anything that you set is not an end-all, be-all, never going to happen after you reach it. And I think that's really what is wrong with a lot of these quick fix mentality type fads, diets, um, exercise programs, different areas of wellness, they fall short because there's a start and a stop. And then people don't create the, the habits within in order to sustain it after the stopping point. So that is something that we're going to talk about um, and shift. The first thing though, after you do the little circle of life, or you create your own goals on your own is, again, I want you to pause and come up with your why. Why are you choosing this as your goal, as your resolution, as something that's going to help you to create better wellness? Then, you know, for example, I want to start with just a couple. And the first one we're going to start with is movement. And notice I didn't say exercise. And sometimes the word exercise for people just creates a a bad vibe because it's a dreaded thing having to go to exercise for my health and they make it into such a production. And so movement is more of a flow. It's more of something that you actually like doing. Um, We all have to move. If we we don't move, we're not going to be living. So we all need to move in some way, shape, or form. And that's going to look different for everybody. Pick something that you enjoy. Set realistic steps to get there. Again, if you're a runner or you want to be a runner, maybe a 5K. If you're somebody who um, is not really into um, resistance training and maybe that's something you want to add in this year, you know, you're adding it in maybe because you're in menopause and you know that, you know, you lose lean muscle when all of that um, is happening. So maybe you want to incorporate more, you know, weights into your movement that you do on a weekly basis. Again, setting those realistic goals and, or excuse me, realistic steps as you're creating the plan to get to the goal of whatever it is you're trying to accomplish is going to be huge because a lot of times, again, we we go from A to Z and we forgot it, we forget about the middle part. Um, a second one that I want to talk about is health. So notice again, we're not saying diet, we're not saying quick fix, we're not saying you know, juice, uh, like a juice cleanse. We're not saying vegan. We're not saying uh, paleo. We're not saying keto. We're not saying any of the terms because again, it's, there's such a wide variety of things that plays into our health with food and it's different for everybody. So coming up with your why, why do you want to focus on your health with food Um, or creating a better, you know, eating environment for yourself. I want to talk about, you know, adding in. If you're somebody that is thinking about changing their eating habits this year, please just don't go cold turkey with something. Please try to make steps that are going to help you get there in a sustainable way. So for example, if you're somebody who really doesn't love vegetables or just doesn't make them a lot or, you know, just doesn't have have them with every meal or or whatever, Start adding in more vegetables, add in more nutrient food, more nutrient dense food, um, add in more protein. If you're somebody who really doesn't get enough protein in their day, which if you're in midlife, right, if you are somebody who um, is in perimenopause, menopause or post, you need to up your protein. Your protein should be a large majority. You should try to have 20, uh, excuse me, 30 to 40 grams per meal, 100 minimum a day which you might be saying, oh my gosh, how do I get there? That's so much. That's never going to work. Forget it. I'm not going to do it. Again, let's just start adding more protein, being intentional with adding protein to every meal so that it doesn't have such an overwhelming feel. So we're going to add in stuff. And by adding in things, 
naturally things will start to be crowded out. If you're having a high protein, you know, nutrient dense meal, you're not going to want that sweet after. Or maybe you will. And if you do, you maybe you have a little bit of it or you just have a healthier version of it. I'm never going to say, you know, completely get rid of something. I'm always going to help you to find healthy swaps because we should never feel deprivation or deprived when we're creating better health and wellness for ourselves. Intermittent fasting, I think, is something that I wanna talk about because I wanna reframe what that actually means and what it means from a health perspective. The way that our body works is we eat, and 90 minutes later, you know, our body is processing the food and it's getting down to our stomach and then it's being, um, you know, the nutrients that we need are extracted and and placed where it needs to be in our body and then the other stuff keeps going in and then hopefully finds its way out of our body. It takes about 90 minutes for our body to be able to do that. Intermittent fasting basically has you start eating at a certain time and stop eating at a certain time. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. If you've never tried intermittent fasting, do not start with a 24 hour or 17 hour or something insane. Start very small with ease. Eat an hour after you wake up, stop eating after dinner. So let's just give an example. If you're somebody who wakes up at six for work, or if you don't work, you know, have quiet time, get ready, whatever, maybe have a glass of water with lemon and start preparing, you know, your food, you know, in 40, 45 minutes later. So you're eating, you know, kind of an hour after. You might go a couple of hours after. It just really depends on you, your morning routine, what you have going on in the morning. The idea is not to eat straight away when you wake up. So let's just, we're using this as an example, but you wake up at six, you might, you know, eat breakfast around seven, I don't know, seven or eight, let's just say, and then you stop eating after dinner. And let's say you eat dinner at five. So you're done eating by like 5.30. So if you think about just for the ease of time, let's just say eight to six. So that's 10, a 10 hour window of eating from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. This is again, just step one. From 6 p.m. until eight o'clock the next morning, you're not going to be eating. This allows your body to repair itself while it's sleeping, to not be trying to process food and figure out what to do with it if you're somebody who normally eats up until bedtime or a late dinner and falls into bed before it has enough time to do its job. Do that for a couple of weeks on and off and see how you feel. And then maybe you wanna do a little bit longer. There are all different methods to intermittent fasting, but if you're just starting out and you've never done it before, but you keep hearing the buzzword and you keep thinking that's going to be your quick fix, please start small, please start where you are. And again, if you've never done it before, stop eating after dinner, eat an hour or two after you wake up and just see how that goes. See how your body feels after a couple of weeks. The next thing I wanna talk about is joy. Joy is on the wheel. And notice that we didn't talk about happy because happiness comes mostly from things from earthly things, they come from possessions, they come from things that give you this little like excitement feeling, this makes you happy in the moment. Happiness usually usually isn't a long-term everlasting feeling. It's usually something that, again, is just short-term, comes from things. Joy is a long-lasting state of mind And so we call, I call it like your daily mindset. If you have a mind that is peaceful, that feels content, you're practicing having joy in your life. When you are somebody who finds joy within and is, it's not coming from things externally. So when you wake up in the morning, when you talk to yourself about the things you're grateful for, When you go to bed thinking about the things of the day that you are grateful for or your accomplishments, you're finding joy from within. So I want everyone to kind of really play with this year the difference for yourself between things that bring you happiness and the state of joy that you feel. And we can talk about that on and off throughout the year because I think that's very interesting. The last component I want to talk about 
is our home environment. And some of you might be scratching your heads and thinking, well, how does my home environment have anything to do with my wellness and health? Well, it does. And it does in a big way because having your house, your home environment in a way that feels, you know, functional, that is decluttered, um, that creates the space for your mind to be able to be, uh, have the ability to be able to think more clearly, all of this stuff creates less stress for us creates less overwhelm. When we walk in a room and it's cluttered and there's piles everywhere and there's stuff everywhere, it creates clutter in your mind. So does everything have to be perfect every day? Does it have to be put away every single day? No, but if you have a place for everything and you have systems within your home, that becomes easy. It, do, it doesn't become a chore. It's just what you do. If you take something out, you put it back in the same spot. We talk about pantry makeovers a lot. Pantry makeovers is something that is important when you're trying to eat healthy. When you revamp some of the things you have by looking at ingredients and getting rid of and all of that stuff, it makes it very helpful to be able to create meals and snacks with things that you have in your house with ease, which again, creating health and wellness, we're always looking for ways to do it with a sense of ease and less overwhelm. So if you are, I don't know why I'm using the pantry as an example, but if you're recreating your pantry to um, you know, help you to have these tools and things that you need in order to create these snacks and meals. Your, you know, pantry is going to be set up in a way that's going to be less cluttered because you're going to have to see things. You're going to have to know what you have. And again, does that mean going out and spending a thousand dollars on all these organized baskets and all this other stuff? No, it just means taking things and using what you have in your home. Um, one of the, um, I have a friend, Jody, who um, has an organizing business, which I'm going to drop her link in the show notes, and she's going to be on the show in a couple of weeks. Um, and she is someone who can help you to clean your pantry out, or not just your pantry, but spaces in your home that feel cluttered, or spaces in your home that are not efficient and working for you. And with that, that is helping you to create better wellness in your life. Um, because again, your home is a space where you come together with your family, with yourself, with your spouse, you have conversations, you do all your daily stuff. It should be a stress-free, clutter-free space so that you can think as clearly as possible. You can find happiness and joy within and all the things. So again, I'm super excited about that episode. That's going to be coming up soon. I will drop her um, link in the show notes, but she's also going to be, which, which we're going to talk about on the episode. Um, she's going to be creating a membership this year for people who don't just want a, a one and done. They want, a, you know, an upfront bigger job, but then they want throughout the year, they want to keep up with it. And so she's going to have this really cool membership that I think you guys um, if you're into your home environment and wanting to make some changes this year, she might be your person for that. So again, we just touched on, you know, a couple of the 12. Um, and again, this are these are things that are coming to my mind. But for you, it might be something different. For you, you know, it might be different areas. It might be, you might think differently about these areas that I've talked about. And again, I always hope that from this, from every episode you listen to, there is something that, that you can walk away with that maybe you hadn't thought of before. And so this episode was really important to me to do in January because it kind of goes against the grain of what society says that we should be doing. And I would love to continue the conversation um, in the Facebook group about reframing, about you know not doing what other people are doing. I would love to know what your goals are. I would love to know you know, your plan of action. If you are somebody who doesn't know what to do, if you're somebody who needs a guide on the side, um, I am a holistic health coach. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I'm also um, creating a group program this year. As some of you know, I uh, am launching an Empty Nest group 
a membership for moms who are in this phase who um, want to gather with other moms um, and talk about what this empty nest life is and what we're doing with it. Um, for those of you who um, remember a couple of months ago, I was talking about that, but unfortunately with some um, things that happened with my mom, I had to kind of put that on pause and um, I'm ready now to get restarted. So you will hear from me in January if you already signed up for it. I will tell you the new date. For local people, we're gonna have an in-person first um, event, a launch. Um, if you're in the local area, um, this is for you. If you're not, then the membership going forward is going to be on Zoom. And it'll be um, twice a month and there'll be once a month. There'll be a, a guest speaker coming in on different topics. And then once a month, we were, we'll meet, we'll get into breakout rooms, we'll talk about a topic. Um, we'll really help each other. We'll keep each other accountable for whatever it is you're looking for within that area. Um, and then, you know, we're going to keep going from there. Empty nesting is a whole beast in itself. Um, it's an amazing time in our lives and I want to create that space for people so that everybody enjoys this new chapter, um, but it does come with some challenges and some emotional pieces. And so that's what that's gonna be about. But again, if you're looking for someone to help you create these goals that you have in mind and create the plan for it and help you really implement it and he keep you accountable, that is what my one-on-one -on -one um, coaching is about. So feel free to DM me, of course, um, send me an email, however you want to get in touch with me. But again, I want to invite you guys to the Facebook group so that we can continue the conversation because I think conversation is super important when we're trying to create something new. I think support and accountability and feeling seen and heard with other people that are kind of in that same boat really helps us to, um, as a catapult, to keep going. So again, please join my Facebook group if you're not in it already. If you are, please put your voice out there. I want to hear from you. Other people want to hear from you. Um, and I, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to this year. More than you guys know, 2024 is gonna be a very productive year. Um, I do wanna leave you with one last thing, which is, uh, if you are following me on social media, you know that um, I did a giveaway with your word of the year. So I would love to know your word of the year and the why behind it. Um, my word of the year is pause and I wear my hat that says pause on it. It is a great reminder for me to stop and pause um, several times a day when I'm feeling overwhelmed, when I feel stress arising, when I'm feeling frustrated. Um, Today I'm wearing my hat and it happened three or four times where I was doing something and I was feeling uh, a little bit of frustration coming up and all I did was just touch my hat and touch the word pause and it just gave me a moment to close my eyes, take a deep breath and reframe my feelings and what was happening to see it differently. And so if you haven't picked a word for this year, I really encourage you to pick a word. This word will drive you through the year and all of the goals and all of the resolutions and all the steps and all the things that you do should really kind of be projected out from this word or using this word within it. So for me, pause is really important this year because I feel like it is something in which I need to work on. I need to work on pausing before reacting. I need to work on pausing um, to be able to see things in a clear lens, with a clearer lens. Um, but I love to hear people's words and their whys. So again, follow me in my Facebook group and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the whys and hear from you guys because um, I'm just so intrigued by everybody's why or their word, excuse me, and their why behind it. Um, until next time, I hope that you guys have an amazing week. I hope that you find peace. I hope that you find light. Um, and I want you to do that by being present, by pausing, um, and by allowing all possibilities to happen. Until next time, um, again, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for tuning in today. I loved being here with you. I hope that you got something from today's episode. I'd love to hear what resonated with you. 
Drop a comment below and if you feel led to, download the episode and share it with someone you love that needs to hear this message. As we continue to spread the goodness of this podcast, I'd love for you to help us by leaving a review on Apple Podcast or and or a rate on Spotify. As we increase listeners, we will come up more often when women are searching for podcasts to listen to. To stay connected with me, you can check out my social media pages at Live Life Balanced with Robin. You can check out my website at livelifebalancedwithrobin.com. You can book a discovery call. And if you're looking for a way to get started right now, you can opt in for my new quick guide for the Empty Nester Refresh. You can join my wait list for my new course, It's Your Time, which is going to be launching soon, which I'm super excited about. And as always, thank you for letting me be part of your day. It truly means a lot that you're allowing me to be on your wellness journey with you. Until next time, find peace, love, and light by breathing, being present, and allowing for all possibilities to happen.